Hey guys, so um, let's talk handstands. So if you have ever taken one of my handstand workshops, then you have heard me say the best place to work on handstands is on the grass. So uh, if you're a local around here, you know that it's a pretty nice day out and chances are you've got access to a little patch of grass. So join me, uh, pick up your phone, come outside. And the reason I say it's, this is the best place to work on handstands is because of your hands, right? So uh, it can be a bit of a, a mental shift um, to stop using your hands like paddles, right? That they're just this flat surface and you get into the yoga room and it's on a hardwood floor and you, you've got your mat and you're a little bit terrified because oh, what's gonna happen if I go over? Um, and you need to get used to using your hands by gripping, right? So you wanna have that, the middle of your hand is like a fulcrum. You wanna press into your fingertips and be able to work the balance like that. Uh, and when you're on the grass, it's just, it's a completely normal activity. The second thing that the grass is really useful for is that it's a pretty soft landing, right? So uh, probably the most intimidating about doing handstands in the middle of the room when you're in yoga is that, oh no, what happens if I go over? Uh, so this is a great time to work on your cartwheel, which is going to be the first thing that we do today. So come on out, get ready. Uh, I just went for a run, so I'm pretty warmed up, but you might not be. So let's make sure that you warm up those adductors because cartwheels, um, if you're like me and of a certain, you know, age, chances are you haven't done a cartwheel in about 30 years. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you do in your life. Maybe I could be totally wrong. But uh, um, if you're like me, then you're going to need to make sure you warm up those adductors. So we'll take some skandhasanas, right? Open it up. Come over to one side. You can flip those toes up. Find a little bit of your inner hamstring. Maybe even play with rotating your foot inside and out. And then we'll come over to the other side and start finding that big inner thigh, upper uh, opening there. And then you can even take some time to go back and forth. We go don't forget to warm up your wrists right I usually shake mine out a lot I do a lot of circles I do a lot of uh, little inverted angli mudras uh, I tend to sit around in squats a lot <laughs> to give my hips a little bit extra opening I'm not naturally a very flexible person uh, at all I'm naturally super strong but uh, I have found that God doesn't give you both. <laughs> you're either really strong or you're really flexible. Uh, and whatever you're not, you have to spend time working on. So I spent a lot of time working on flexibility just so that I have any opening at all. All right, so now that you're nice and warmed up, find a patch of grass and start working on your cartwheels. Right, so if you uh, need to remember how to do a cartwheel, it looks something like this, right? Your cartwheel doesn't need to look like that. Your cartwheel can be, uh, it can be pretty little, right? This is good enough of a cartwheel. Really, it just needs to get, it just needs to be comfortable because when you're in a handstand, and let's say you kick up, oops, I can never go over when I wanna go over, by the way. And you go over, you need to be able to pick up one hand and move it, right? And let's say you're in the middle of the class middle of the room and you don't there's a mat right in front of you a little trick that I have found is that if you go over all you need to do is pick up one hand at all right if I go over I just pick it up and I land pretty much right where I am right just offside of my mat and by the way I keep looking down because there's like some of cinnamon's poop right there so I'm trying pretty hard not to hit it <laughs> and making a mental note that I'm gonna have to come clean it up later so after you've had enough fun working on your cartwheels and you feel really comfortable finding some lightness uh, going over, then it's time to find some handstand drills. And one of my favorites is gonna be, find your strong leg, right? And always remember you do your good leg and then you do your other good leg. 
bring your shoulders over your wrists, rotate the soft part of your elbows forward. We're gonna look forward and you're just gonna kick that bottom foot into your hip, right? Kick, hold, and down. Kick, hold. So we're not actually, there tends to be this little, obsession with getting both legs up straight like any other version isn't a handstand and I would um, encourage you to remember that any time there is only your hands are on the mat so even if you're simply learning how to float forward you're technically in a handstand right your legs are just ornamental so eventually those little heel kicks Will get bigger and bigger but you want to start to bring your knee into your chest like that right so resisting the temptation to get up into this big back bend you want to start pulling that knee into your chest hold it hold it hold it come on down and what that does is you'll notice that when I pull when I pull my knee into my chest then it starts to take my back bend leg that's going way way over my head and and uh, heading me into um, over kick land. And it starts to make that leg vertical straight up, right? It starts to engage that transverse abdominus. It starts to pull your core in and find that solid, solid, solid handstand, right? Let's try it again. Plant your hands, plant your hands. shoulders over your wrists, gaze is down. We're gonna pick up that heel, bring it down. Right now I'm pushing into my fingertips. I'm pulling my knee into my chest. My top leg is going straight, straight, straight up. Once I have that, I can bring that bottom leg up. And there's my vertical line. Yeah? Work on it. All right, I love you guys. Can't stay to see you on the mat. Ciao.